Kindred Spirits or Odd Couple. Three days of joint photo ops featuring Emmanuel Macron and Luis Inacio Lula da Silva make for more than entertaining viewing. They're considerably confusing. The first state visit by a French president to Brazil in 11 years highlights how long overdue this reckoning was. It's the leftist Lula who wants to get a South American trade deal with Europe over the line, and it's the liberal Macron who wants to protect French farmers from what's denounced here as the globalization of agro-industry. Both, though, have a common foe, far-right leaders, like Lula's predecessor, Jair Bolsonaro, who has no qualms about chopping down the Amazon, or Marine Le Pen, who's quietly rooting for the return of Donald Trump to the White House. So where do interests, where do common interests lie for the likes of Brazil and France and their current leaders. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at Lula rolling out the red carpet for Macron. And with us from Brasilia, French member of parliament representing citizens abroad in the Americas, Eleonore Carrois. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. Hi. From Rio, France 24 journalist uh, Tim Vickery. Good to see you. Lovely to be back. Always a pleasure and an honor to be part of your, uh, your illustrious panel. <laughs> and it must be something serious to get Macron out of Paris au printemps. Well, he likes to get out of Paris these days. Mm -hmm. uh, Brazilian journalist Felipe Galvon, maker of the documentary film Encantado, is with us as well. Good to see you again. Good to see you again, too. Your reactions on the hashtag F24 debate. Uh, Dateline, the Itagia shipyard outside Rio de Janeiro this Wednesday, the presidents of Brazil and France, on hand for the launch of the Tolinero, a diesel-powered sub built on site using French technology. The suits and ties of the two leaders in stark contrast from the previous day when they were in the Amazon. Matthew Mary Carouchet has more. Dressed in shirt sleeves deep in the Amazon, the presidents of France and Brazil made great shows of friendship as they gathered to honor indigenous peoples. After Emmanuel Macron awarded the Legion of Honor to Kayapo chief Rayoni Mectuktire, he proceeded to laud Luis Inacio Lula da Silva for his work to protect the environment. I'm delighted today that with President Lula, there is a federal government that has made the protection of the Amazon the development of the bioeconomy and the future of indigenous peoples, a cause that isn't just a cause of resistance. Together, they announced a plan to raise 1 billion euros to create a carbon market that would reward countries that invest in natural carbon sinks, such as rainforests. Relations between France and Brazil have improved during Lula's presidency after four years of contention under Jair Bolsonaro. France is the third largest foreign investor in Brazil, particularly in the defense sector. France and Brazil are also working together to manufacture four submarines, the third of which will be launched on Wednesday. But behind this facade of cooperation, there are stubborn bones of contention between the two countries. The European Union and the South American Mercosur bloc have been seeking a free trade agreement for years. As France deals with repeated demonstrations from farmers over pay and regulations, Macron has said he opposes the deal because it allows South American farmers to operate under a more lenient rule set. I think it's normal for France to try to defend its agriculture. I think it's normal. Maybe it's a more difficult turning point. But it's normal that they also understand that Brazil can't give up on public purchasing and on this agreement. Macron will travel to Brasilia on Thursday, where the presidents are expected to discuss their differences regarding the war in Ukraine. For example, Macron is keen on supplying Ukraine with more armaments to counter Russia's invasion. Lula, however, has refused to condemn Russia's aggression, instead blaming both sides for the war. He has also opposed sanctions on Moscow and called for a ceasefire and negotiated settlement. Tim Vickery, uh, yeah, those are the left-wing credentials of uh, Lula. Lula, the trade unionist. But let me get this straight. It's the trade unionist leftist who is for the free trade deal and the former banker uh, uh, who's liberal center-right who's against it. Um, yeah, this word leftist, 
I think it's easier to think in terms of Lula being a consensualist, a builder of consensus. The best description I've ever read of him was to compare Lula to Noah, trying to get all the animals onto the ark before the flood. Now, trade unionist, pragmatist, let's do a deal. So how far can he get Macron onto his ark? There are things that they're not going to be able to resolve in this. The, the trade deal, I think, is, is one of them. And they can hide behind the fact that this isn't Brazil and France, the trade deal. It's the European Union and Mercosur. It's hard to see how they're going to be able to make progress on, on, on those things. But there are two areas, and we've seen them in the two days so far of, the, of, of this visit, where very, very concrete, pragmatic progress can be made. Yesterday was given over to the ecology in Belém. Now, there's a real chance of partnership here. And ecology also means business. Now, Macron has been accompanied by 140 French business leaders. Some of them are in the new ecological friendly sectors. There are business opportunities there for both sides. And the other, very, very important, defense. Now, France is a, a supplier of military technology. Brazil is a buyer of military technology. This, uh, this process of um, joint building of submarines, one of the submarines due to be built, in theory, can be nuclear powered. There are only six countries in the world that have nuclear powered submarines. Brazil could be the seventh. But it's dependent on French technology. And this stalled during those difficult years of the Bolsonaro government. Now, there's the expectation that there might be a, a, a memorandum of understanding signed between the two countries on this issue, and Brazil can once more get that technology that it needs. So this is Lula, the consensualist, trying to bring Macron onto his arc. And it sounds like he has. Uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron, who in his speech a little while earlier, uh, offering to help Brazil with the building of that first nuclear-powered sub. Let's take a listen. Each and every one of us should face nuclear propulsion while fully respecting all the most rigorous non-proliferation commitments. This framework exists and is possible. You want it, and France will be by your side. La France sera à vos côtés. Edinor Carrois, is this strictly business or is this also a strategy? As we heard in that report earlier, uh, Lula the leftist who doesn't want to condemn Vladimir Putin, uh, and yet the deals he are, he's making here, this is a sensitive area, defense, is with France. Is that the potential for this to grow further? It is indeed a strategic partnership that Brazil and France have had over the years and that President Macron is here in Brazil to renew. And this is actually taking place tomorrow in Brasilia. As you said earlier, um, we're right now in Sao Paulo with uh, several businessmen and women uh, from France participating to a forum on green economy, which is another aspect of the cooperation between France and Brazil. So I would say it is both. It is both strategy. It is business. It is also also um, starting again a relationship that had suffered from the years of Jair Bolsonaro, where France and Brazil were a bit apart. So it is a it is a very important moment for our two countries and for my constituents, the French people living here in Brazil. It is extremely important to see the commitment of their president um, to the Brazilian-French partnership. What would you say about the personal chemistry between the two? Look, it's always very strange, right? When you look at uh, Lula and Sarkozy, they were even more apart in terms of ideology and uh, political views, and yet they were a very good partnership as well. And so Macron and Lula, they have a true... I'm not going to say friendship, but a true understanding of of, um, of the you know the, the the sense of the word and and what the priorities are. And Macron also um, showed support to Lula when he was imprisoned, and I think President Lula thanks him for that. So there is an extremely good relationship between the two presidents, and we could we saw that yesterday when we were in the Amazon uh, during the ceremony uh, with Cacique Raoni. When uh, they sit down for the state visit and they talk behind closed doors about this Mercosur trade deal that's been held up for years, other EU nations say it's France over this issue of farming that's doing it, will it be the elephant in the room or does everybody just kind of know this is part of the, uh, uh, of the way things go? 
Look, that's a very important question, of course, but as rightly said before, it's not a bilateral question, it's a European question, and the truth is... It's not a bilateral question, but uh, it's France okay. specifically that's leading the charge to stop Mercosur from being ratified. And that's very convenient for most European countries because although there are other European leaders that may seem a bit more eager to sign the agreement, the truth is most of the parliaments are not willing to ratify the agreement as it stands. And in a way, France has a position that it's pretty consistent, albeit pretty strong, because since, 19, since 2019, France has said, we're not going to sign an agreement that doesn't include ecological safeguards, that doesn't include the mirror clauses that will allow for our regulation, our environmental regulation to be applied where the meat, for instance, is produced and so forth. And there's been discussions um, over the past month, especially since Lula was elected, to see whether it was possible to add an environmental addendum to the agreement, but those discussions have failed. So France, in a way, is just saying what it has been saying over the past years. I think it's saying it maybe louder than other countries, but it is far from being the only European country that is not um, comfortable with the agreement as it stands. Uh, it's no wonder, by the way, that French farmers are wary of a trade deal with South America and with Brazil uh, when it comes to agriculture over the past two decades. Brazil's sector has grown an average of 10% a year. Just look at the, the, this graph here that's uh, coming up, uh, uh, Felipe Galvon. And as you know, as a Brazilian in Paris, the farmers in this country of late have been taking out the pitchforks and complaining about squeezed margins and small farms being, being squeezed. Again, is the world turned on its head when Lula, associated with the left, is the one touting free trade? It's... Um it's a mind-blowing situation uh, for us uh, Brazilians. It's very difficult to follow what's the point about this meeting. Uh, but for me, I think it's a little ironic. Um, I'm against, uh, personally, personally, I'm against the... The EU-Mercosur deal. Yes, but not for the same reason as President Macron. Uh, I'm against because I understand the the battle of uh, the farmers in France. I think that it will, it will be bad for the, the French agriculture and it would be bad for the Brazilian industry. And um, I think that um, the reason of the uh, the green uh, the green standards of Europe, it seems like a little condescendent a lyrical descendant uh, to, to say that that's the reason we, 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 don't, uh, we don't want your, 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 your food. Because for Brazilians, uh, people around me uh, in Brazil, they said they felt like you don't, uh, what's the problem with our food, you know? Well, for one, glyphosate, uh, the uh, extensive use of it, much more Perfect. than... Exactly. But the real problem, it's not this. The real problem is agribusiness. It's not Brazil. It's not uh, the Mercosur. So, and I think that it's not on the table. It's a, ve a very ironic that we are talking about this now. Macron is in Brazil. And uh, just one year after San Solin affair, the mega basins they, they were trying to do in France is the same it's, uh, uh, I think it's a symptom of the same problem that San we are... was uh, these, these water retention systems that were yes. protested by environmentalists. So you're saying, if I hear you correctly, yes. that both Macron and Lula are doing a little bit of greenwashing. Yes. I think that, that it's, um, for me, it's a little, and these, these memes show that it's, uh, it's a little ridiculous for me. T Tim Vickery on the campaign trail when he won, uh, when he came back to office, uh, Lula uh, roundly denounced uh, his predecessor's uh, closeness to the agro uh, uh, industry business. Uh, is there, uh, has he changed policies radically though? Well, the, the agro business sector was one of the key sectors behind the far right, behind Bolsonaro, when Brazil stopped growing. Uh, at the huge rates that it was in the early years of the current century. Uh, agro-business became discontent uh, and uh, got behind 
Bolsonaro. Now, agribusiness is is a tricky subject for Lula because it's certainly not a not a natural ally. Um, the massive agribusiness. Uh, it doesn't feed Brazil in large scale. It's an export crop. And it doesn't employ much of Brazil because it's so capital intensive. So that, that's always going to be an, an awkward relationship. On the ecological issue, more important, I think, and, and this is something which uh, Macron and Lula, they're singing from the same song sheet on this one. Uh, Macron is, is saying that two things are absolutely fundamental to protect the ecology and to develop the rainforest. He says this is not incompatible. This can be done in a way that both safeguards the future of the planet and also provides jobs and dignity for the people uh, and uh, prevents, and this is seen, I think, on both sides uh, as, as something absolutely necessary to prevent, to stall the rise of the far right, which is, is, is one thing that, that both of these have in common. So where I think they will, they will concentrate... And Lula, as I said, he's a, from a trade union background. He's a pragmatist. Where can we do a deal? It's very hard to see what progress he can make on this trade deal. It's very hard. He understands politics. He understands the political pressures um, that, that, are, that are placed on, on Macron because of the anger of, of the French farmers. He understands that, that there's very little room there. But in other areas, where can he get Mag Mag Macron a little bit closer to his position, and certainly the the, the uh, ecology sector, certainly defence, also perhaps strategically. I think the strategic position is important because of the countries of the G7, France is seen as the one which is most independent of the United States in foreign policy. Um, Lula made a lot of headlines when he spoke out about Gaza. He made a clumsy, uh, I think, comparison uh, to, to the Holocaust, which got him the status of uh, persona non grata in Israel. But there hasn't been a lot of pushback. Um, and, and many in, in, the, in the West, I mean, even the position of the United States, is, is being forced to detach itself a little bit from Israel on this issue. Now, France uh, is really Israel's perhaps oldest ally. It was before the United States. It was maybe the most important ally of Israel in those first years. Uh, and Lula maybe will, will, will try and try and to make common ground on this issue as well. That, I think, is what these meetings will all, all, all be about. Not where are we going to disagree, and we're always going to be going to disagree, but where can we get a little bit closer? Where can we do a little bit for our constituents? Uh, Eleanor Carrois, how do you see Brazil? Is it the country that puts the B in BRICS, uh, or that's a champion of the global south, or is it um, a, a possible alternative? We're sort of dancing around the topic, so I'll cut to the chase here. A possible alternative to uh, the United States should a certain Donald Trump return to office? Well, one thing is, is clear is that Brazil is a partner, a partner for France, a strategic partner, and that this partnership needs to be deepened and threatened because it has suffered, as I said before, from, from years of, um, of, 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 of a difficult time. Now, to go back to what you were saying about where can we... I, I fully agree with the um, with the analysis that was just made. It's it's about finding finding where we can agree on, finding where we can actually uh, be together. We're not aligned on every single subject. We're not aligned on the vision of the word um, on the global south for for one, but we're we are aligned on the most important, which is the respect of of uh, democracy, the respect of uh, the, the the human rights, also of uh, indigenous rights. That that I think was. Not not just it was not at all actually green watching. It was something very important. And the fact that two presidents of major countries sat in the Amazon to show their support to indigenous people and to the Amazon and to its preservation, I think, was more than just a symbol. Um, now, going back to Mercosur, if I may just take one second to go sure. to have in France, when you look at the protest of the agriculture in France, it's not only about how much meat is going to be sold if the agreement were signed. If you look at it from, from the figures, it's actually one stack by French person by year that would that we're talking about. So it's not it's not about that. It's not about you know the market being flooded with Brazilian meat. It's about that meat being produced with standards that are different and in the perception of the agricultures in France, that that is um, that is made with the standards that are not as um, 
constraints as they are in France. So it's more a fight about standards, about you know, agricultural and, and uh, environmentalists, agriculture and environmentalists. And so that's why it actually is all related. It's not from the one side, the agricultural protests, and on the other side, um, the, the, the fact that we're requesting a, an addendum, an environmental addendum. And, um, and yes, so it's a partner. It, it is a very important partner. And the word being what it is with all these crises, and of course, the perspective of a Donald Trump returning to office, it is extremely important to uh, go back to your friends and show and show support and show that you're willing to work together. Yeah, and uh, breaking news, kind of uh, following the French president and you, Eleanor Carrois, we have Brazilian police uh, this uh, Wednesday opening an investigation into why Jair Bolsonaro spent two nights at the Hungarian embassy in Brasilia last month. The New York Times this week published a leaked video of uh, the uh, former president and far-right leader arriving there after his passport was seized in an investigation into an alleged uh, military uh, coup plot. Um, the, the, uh, the sort of battle lines are drawn here, and it's interesting, Felipe Galvon, because where does he go? He goes to the Hungarian embassy. The Hungari Hungary is the one country right now in the EU uh, that's a bit of th the laggard when it comes to uh, taking on Vladimir Putin. Yes, and Viktor Orban, and uh, that so I think that uh, you you touch the, the 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 spinal cord of this all this this affair. Uh, I think that uh, it's a this reunion, reunion between uh, Macron and, and Lula. Uh, it's a sort of political reunion uh, to show uh, a possibility of uh, a real alliance against the, the far right. Macron it, it, it is, um, we, we, we are, we are Philippe, do you realize what you're saying? In the old days, it was left versus right. Yes. Now what you're talking about is everybody versus the far right. Yes, and my, my concern, I'm afraid that um, we, we are not touching the real deal, the real problems and uh, the popular issues now. I, there's a saying in Brazil, uh, we say that when things go bad at home, go outside, look abroad. So uh, in Brazil, crisis, the, the economy don't launch. It, that, the, I think that uh, uh, President Lula has 35% of popularity now. Never in the history he could, uh, with, with, his, with his history, uh, we could uh, think about this 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 number, and M Macron here he's facing the rise of far right uh, that uh, we we are seeing uh, in June in June the European elections. I think that the far right will make a, the greater score uh, in in history in French history. So I think that all this this uh, this mess, <laughs> if I can say, it's some kind of. Uh, win-win instrumentalization of Amazon. Tim Vickery, on Thursday, when there is that state visit portion of the visit, is this what it's all about? We know that there is kind of a, a loose far-right international alliance between the likes of Viktor Orban, Jair Bolsonaro, Donald Trump, etc. cetera. Uh, is this building a counter-alliance? Is that what this is about? Yes, but people have to see this in their own lives. And here I return to the point that Lula is essentially a consensualist. Uh, he is someone who works inside the system. Now, in his first two mandates uh, earlier in the century, um, in favorable circumstances when China was growing at, at extraordinary rates, he was able to make that system work for poor people and the mass of the population as it had never worked before. Now the circumstances are more difficult, but the system remains the same. Um, rents, bills, they are going up by more than wages. People, people are feeling this, hence the low approval rating that my friend Felipe Galvão uh, ha has just cited. So uh, if, if the far right are, are to be stalled, it's going to take much more than... than, uh, than uh, than um, presidents of state meeting in state visits. There needs to be more on the street, and Lula's base are impatient for this to happen.
and uh, so much more to talk about. Unfortunately, we're out of time for this abridged edition of the debate. I want to thank you, uh, Tim Vickery. I want to thank Eleanor Carrois for being with us uh, for, with the French delegation there uh, in Sao Paulo, and Philippe Galvan. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate. Thank you.